Hello and welcome back to the quality control series for our F-18 flight school campaign that we've been working on. Uh, I started making videos out of these, as I said in previous episodes, because I'm supremely unmotivated to finish this uh, because of just the inane details that are involved in making it happen. Uh, but I figure if I start making videos and publishing them, it'll vote it motivate me to put a little bit more time and effort into it and hopefully finally get this thing published because I've been messing around with this for a while. Uh, in the last episode, we were finishing up the BVR, the single target BVR mission where we teach you how to do, how to find the, per, find the enemy on radar, uh, crank, crank as you approach, fling over, fire your missile, crank to the other side, try to hold on to guide missile, uh, missile guidance as long as you can, and then dive away to defend missiles and things like that. That's kind of the whole purpose of that mission. Uh, it's about 99% done, but unfortunately I can't figure out a way to uh, pause the simulation without allowing the... Um, without allowing the narration to continue. Uh, you can active pause. I figured out a way to, like through the programming in the mission editor to active pause, but that doesn't stop any missiles that you fired or any other aircraft or anything in the thing. It just pauses your aircraft. So um, the problem with that is, is that the missile is continuing to go while the new narration is talking and the new, the new narration doesn't have anywhere near enough time to finish by the time your missile hits it. And then once your missile hits the target, that brings up the end of mission Con, uh, end of mission uh, narration so i'm gonna let it simmer for a while and hope that maybe somebody will come to my rescue and uh suggest something i can do to kind of just pause the aircraft the missile that we fired and the enemy aircraft just hold those in place until i turn it back off but still allow the narration to go and then i can make that go otherwise i'm gonna have to actually just break the rwr portion of the instructions for that out into another mission so it, it is what it is. It kind of sucks that that's, that's the way it is right now. But uh, yeah, if, if we can figure out pausing everything, I can leave it as is and just add the pause and unpause in. But for now, we're kind of stuck with it. Uh, for today's video, though, we're not going to continue messing with that because I, I just I don't have a way of moving it forward. We're going to go ahead and advance forward to the next mission where we learn about the RWS mode and firing mis mi uh, missiles at multiple targets. Uh, my primary objective right now is just to go... I haven't messed with these missions in a long time, so I'm just going back through and re-verifying that they all work the way I set them up to work. Uh, so we're just kind of flying through them and seeing what works and what doesn't. While being able to fight single targets effectively is important, in general you will only uh, be doing this when throttle. dealing with aircraft of equivalent or superior technological capability. In many cases, you'll be dealing with older, less capable aircraft that can be more easily defeated with your weapons. In these situations, the use of a different radar mode is preferable. Get yourself in the air and on a heading of 285 so we can practice attacking multiple targets with our missiles. Press IP once you're established on heading, climbing up to 30,000 feet. Let me get my heading 285. And as I did in the last episode, I am going to cheat by taking off using the taxiway because I'm not necessarily trying to do this mission correctly. I am trying to trouble. We, we are we are doing quality control, which means a lot of times a lot of times we have to go through and redo these missions over and over again to make them work. So I'm just going to take off in the most convenient way possible, rather than going for realism because it's just faster to do that. Okay, so heading select for 285. Pull our throttle back to something a little bit more manageable. All right. We are in air-to-air -air mode. I'm just going to go ahead and put the master on now. And then it... So, uh, I say this every time. I'm sorry if you watch these and you know already, but this IP push button is a communications-related button that isn't really used for anything as far as I'm aware. So I basically converted this into a tell the narrator you're, I'm ready for the next set of instructions. By default, the radar starts up in a mode that can only track a single target at a time, called range while search, or RWS. This is good because this mode provides a more solid track, and thus holds a lock better because it's only focused on one target. The drawback is that once you lock up a target, you lose track of everything else. The other mode available to us is track while scan, or TWS, which allows us to lock up a target, or multiple targets, while still scanning the entire range of the radar. Everything has trade-offs, though, so this mode provides more target flexibility at the expense of tracking reliability. Of course, if you have multiple...
multiple targets you need to deal with in a hurry. TWS is where it's at. Switch to TWS mode by pressing the push button next to RWS, which toggles the mode. Now, when I'm going through and trying to like repeat these to fix things, I don't sit and listen to that every time. But for this, uh, for these, I'm going, I'm going to because I need to judge the amount of time it takes to get through all of this versus how quickly we find the enemies. So, as much as it sucks to sit and listen to it. The I interface for this mode isn't very different, except for how you interact with individual targets. When you lock up a target, it won't hide the remaining aircraft, instead placing a number over it to mark it as the first target in your firing sequence. If you lock up another target, the next number in the sequence will show up. While your settings will affect the number of targets you can actually lock up, you can generally get between five and six good tracks for weapon employment, though locking up more than the number of weapons you have is a bit pointless. In RWS mode, the undesignate keybind will unlock the target, since there can be only one, but in TWS mode it cycles the through actively one. locked targets. <laughs> to remove your locks, you need to press the reset button on the right side of the MDI. This button here. One of the nice features of TWS mode is that because you're not fixating your radar on a single target, the RWR of aircraft you've locked up won't be able to tell you're targeting them. This is called a soft lock, as opposed to the hard lock of the RWS, because you're using a software solution to maintain the lock rather than a hyper-focused beam. This is where the reliability issue comes in, as since you're still doing your full scan, it introduces room for error, which can break the lock much easier. Not much of a problem for targets flying normally, but definitely becomes a potential issue if they start defending. Since you won't give any indication of an attack posture, it's less likely the target will defend before you get your missiles off, but just always keep the reduced lock reliability in the back of your mind. When firing in TWS mode, you generally won't be performing the crank you would be using in RWS, primarily because you need to have your steering dot in the circle for all your missiles. Speaking of that, a great feature of the TWS mode is that you can rapid fire your missiles without having to individually lock between targets. As soon as you fire one missile, the system will automatically cycle to the next target, so you can just keep pressing the trigger until all your missiles are away. Machine gun missiles. By now, you should be able to detect a flight of MiGs out to the west. Use your TDC to lock them up, then once you have a nice big circle indicating a decent probability of kill, as well as the range indicator telling you that you're within the maximum effective range, start firing off your missiles. Once they're away, perform a crank to continue providing guidance to your uh, missiles for as long as possible while forcing any that they might fire at you to track your projected course. Of course, since C3 we're in TWS here should be our AWACS. Mode, there's a reasonable chance they won't know or assume you fired, so they should just keep on flying until you hit them. Like, we're getting some Hold indication the that there's something over here, defend, but... Which is a not reminder sure is going yet. cold and diving to avoid the missile, while using your chaff to confuse the missile. As they approach the targets, the missiles will eventually switch to their own internal guidance and you can go cold. If you end up needing to defend and lose your locks, the missiles will automatically switch to internal guidance and try to find their targets on their own. Oh, Assuming you, you had so, a good okay. probability of kill, you should be able to get at least a couple of the aircraft. Alright, so I wasn't aware that uh, different bar modes limited your ability to... Uh, Okay, so as much as I loved, like I want to have the, I want to have a wider scan, so we have, a, I don't want to have to like hyper focus and constantly be changing back through this. Let's go ahead and get our altitude uh, locked in here. A little bit slow. attention to hit my airspeed and all that and uh yeah but they were really struggling to my landing gear or flaps or anything down right There's no speed brake after burner whatever okay
Okay, let's get all of our... So this is the part that's, like, annoying. I guess we can kind of speed this up a little bit and hope that uh, they start to show up. Because the radar on the F-18 kind of sucks compared to, say, the F-15. So trying to find anything out at a reasonable distance. And I can always, I can, I can't always just go into the F-10 menu. Yeah, they're still like way out there. So I think I need to. Admit. They're still, they're still way out there. I should probably move them closer. So I need to wait until we're like, the problem is, yeah, I definitely need to move these guys closer. I think I put them way out there, assuming I would need the time for the narrations, but that's clearly not the case. And I would imagine we're going to run out of fuel sooner rather than later. Because, like, we're already down to 9,000 pounds. starting to get something here. There we go. They're still really far away. And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember, I haven't, I haven't done the, I haven't done the uh, data link mission, the data link mission in a while, so I don't remember which symbol is mine and which symbol is the data link. I think the top is data link and the bottom is mine when it comes to symbology here, but, uh, yeah. We have to, we're still gonna have to, like, speed things up a little bit to get consistent. I mean, we're, we're not even, oh. Now we're starting to get something here. I've already forgot. Yeah, I definitely need to move these guys in much closer. Um, assuming you have good... By now you should be able to detect the MiG. Use your TDC to lock them up. We have a nice big probability kill. Uh, reasonable chance they won't assume you're fired. Missiles will... Oh, okay. So basically we've already... I, I forgot what I told you to do. So basically we're just trying to hurry up and get to the part where we fire off our missiles. So we're at 50 miles... Bring it down to 40. I, I guess I can. I'm a little concerned that I don't see anything else here. So I don't think my radar is picking them up yet because we're not getting the we're not getting the entire the entire symbol. We're just getting the top half. I'm pretty sure that once you get the once you get the bottom half showing, you've got it on radar. This is 
mildly annoying that I can't find... How do you get behind me? Alright, yeah, I gotta... I gotta do something to fix this. I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with the radar. Because, um... I feel like I have to be, like, right on top of them for it to pick up anything. Radar is not picking up anything. And it's just, they're just constantly showing up on my left side, so I'm, con I'm super confused. I like I'm not I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm making this stuff to kind of learn myself. So yeah, they've engaged me. Like. Assuming I was just going to fire off a bunch of missiles in TWS mode, but... really know what to do with that um we'll, we'll make a couple of changes here i'm not going to play through it again on video uh these guys clearly need to be moved much closer because by the time we finished our stuff i think we were kind of in this block here so i really don't want to be i really don't want to be have them way out here and then so I, th I think we were, if I remember correctly, we were kind of like in this area here once the narrations were finished. So ideally, going back through here, by the time we get here and they've advanced enough, we'll be close enough that we'll actually be able to do something with this. Um, I would appreciate some help understanding a little bit more about the F-18 radar because I do feel like a lot of times I have to be almost on top of them. For the, for the radar to even see them, to be able to start locking them up. I also don't feel like I'm getting any... Um, I also don't feel like I'm getting any help from the AWACS either. Like, it's not... It's not actually doing anything, and... So, I, I would imagine there's probably... There's probably a, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's, it already has an AWACS option on there, so... I don't think there's anything else I'm supposed to do to get it to do that. And I did remember at like while we were in the air, I think, to turn my to turn my uh data link on. So at the very least I should be getting especially with how close these guys are, uh, that, given the power of the AWACS radar. I imagine I should be getting constant updates as to where they are from the AWACS so that I can do that, but I don't know. I'm not sure what... I'm, I, there's a lot about this game that I don't know. One of the reasons that I'm making this campaign is that, for the most part, I know the theory behind everything and how everything's supposed to work, but I don't have a lot of experience, and I don't know all the little details like that. So part of me making this campaign is also learning these kinds of things so that p other people can learn from the things that I learn. So... Now I need I, I need a little bit of help. How, how somebody give me some uh, updates on how the uh, on why I'm struggling to get these guys on the radar outside of just hey your elevation was wrong because I did I was trying to play with it and it still it still didn't seem to want to pick them up so. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and end this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to click the like button to spread it out to more people. Join the channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Join as a member if you'd like early access to videos, among other perks. Or you can just leave YouTube's version of a tip with the thanks button. So again, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Quality Control Series for the F-18 Hornet Flight School Campaign. Be sure to come back for the next episode, and I'll see you then.